How's it going, everybody? Hey, thank you so much for joining us. Continue the conversation podcast. I'm here with the one and only, the Bishop. Come on. Pastor Mike, how's it going, man? Bro, I'm hanging out with all day <laughs> David Ray. It couldn't be better. Well, I don't know about that, but it's good to be here with you. And man, we're just so thankful for our church. Amen. So thankful for the people who are part. Also, those who might be joining us who don't come to church. Right. Here, and they're just hungry for God's Word. And, and what a cool thing to be a part of. I know we're in a new series on spiritual warfare and, mm-hmm. and just believing God is helping people. Right, right. Yeah, the goal is to to equip and empower people because everybody's fighting a battle. Yes. You know, yeah. I mean, some are big, some are small, but man, everybody's got something that they're dealing with. And so hopefully these conversations are helping to equip them. Absolutely. Well, we appreciate you taking time and, and really quarterbacking this today, being here with us. And I know it's going to be so helpful. We're talking about spiritual warfare. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's such an important topic. Mm-hmm. And and really, Paul, we're going to start out in Ephesians 6. I'm going to read just a few verses here to kind of kick us into what we're going to talk about. But Paul is talking to us about the importance of this battle that we're in, That's right. and a battle that really is unseen. Mm-hmm. We don't see it with our physical eyes. We see the impacts of it. Mm-hmm. But he's giving us in the church of Ephesus a, a acute awareness mm-hmm. of what's taking place all around us. So this is a familiar passage. I know it's one you've preached from and and will preach from in the future as well, but Ephesians chapter 6, it talks about the full armor of God, and we'll read right before it gets to the pieces of the armor. This is what he says. It says, a final word. So he's concluding this epistle, this letter. Be strong in the Lord. I like that phrase. Mm -hmm. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Mm -hmm. Put on all of God's armor so that you may be able to stand firm against all strategies that the enemy has a plan mm-hmm. of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers, authorities of the unseen world. So there, were, what we talked about just a minute ago, against mighty powers of darkness in this world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. One more verse. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor mm-hmm. so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after battling you will be able to stand firm. Mm. So I, I want us to start out, Pastor Mike, if you don't mind. Let's talk about the tactics of the enemy. Mm-hmm. Before we get into the, the armor, mm-hmm. just what is the enemy's tactics? I think there's some some very consistent tactics that he's up to. Right. That his strategy really doesn't change a no, whole lot. No, It's kind of predictable. Mm-hmm. It's like a quarterback who's staring down his receiver. But if we can understand how he operates, then I believe God can help us to intercept what he's trying to do and That's prevent right. what he's trying to do. Talk to us about some of the tactics of the enemy. Yeah, well, you're, you're right. I mean, it's, it's nothing new. He's very sly, he's clever, he's cunning, but he's operating from an old playbook. Right. And that's where the Apostle Paul says, don't be ignorant to his mm. devices. You know, So he's been doing this for centuries, from the beginning of time. Um, but he, Paul exhorts us to be strong in the Lord. And so it's not the amount of strength that we have, but it's the source from which that's our good. strength comes right. from. And so I, I want every person t- that's listening to this, watching this, to feel encouraged that when we talk about what the devil does, know that the power of God available to us is greater. Yes, that's so know? important. So, but, you know, the, the enemy, he'll come at us in several different ways. He, he will tempt us. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think about, you know, how Jesus started his ministry in Luke chapter 4. He was tempted in the wilderness. Right. You know, so the very beginning of his ministry, it, there was opposition, mm-hmm. and, and the devil tempted him three times. And, and each time, you know, the, the, how the Lord responded, it clues us into how we are to fight. And then if you fast forward to the end of Jesus' ministry when he's praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, Right. Man, there was such a, a, an attack against him. You know, he prayed, as it were, you know, sweating great drops of blood. Right. And so we see conflict from the beginning of <clears throat> Jesus' ministry to the end. But the devil will come at us and he'll, he'll tempt us. Um, he'll also try to afflict us. Right. You know, if you, uh, you remember the story of Job. Uh, Job was totally unaware of the conversation that had happened Which between God such a, and the devil. Which is such a bizarre scene, yeah. the beginning of Job and that, that narrative. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of mm-hmm. it's poetry, but that narrative is just this glimpse mm-hmm. in heaven where the, the deceiver, uh, Satan, mm-hmm. comes in and mm-hmm. starts to request. Yeah, and it's interesting how he presented himself to God. So I think we have to remember that the authority of God 
is greater than the tactics yes. of the enemy. That's really so good. he came to give an account, and God said, "Hey, where you been? Yeah, you know what have you been doing?" And he says, "I've been patrolling the earth." And then God nominates Job. Hey, have you considered Job? <laughs> yeah. Be like, Lord, <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, leave me Don't out of this conversation. <laughs> um, but we see the uh, the onslaught right. that was. I mean, God gave permission, but He put restrictions on the right. enemy. You know, you know, it's interesting too that you say that. It's almost like. The enemy had to give a report. He yeah. said, hey, what have you been doing? It's not that he lacked awareness. Mm -hmm. God knew. He's all-knowing. He's omniscient. Right. He knows it all. Right. But he was, there's an order here. Hey, mm -hmm. you are not on my level. Right. He, he's making sure this is very much communicated in the text. You are beneath the authority mm -hmm. of God, even though you rebelled outside mm -hmm. of God. No, it's good. That's good. And I think it's important as believers we keep that in mind. Because right. sometimes I, I think there's probably two extremes that, that we can uh, miscalculate when it comes to the attacks of the enemy. We can e uh, either totally dismiss mm -hmm. his power and say, nah, nah, it's a non-issue and, and kind of downplay it because um, he... he He's very smart in what he does, right? And he knows human nature, and you know. So, so you can either dismiss it, or you can magnify the enemy's power that it's so great, right. you know. And either extreme, I think, <laughs> so is dangerous. Is dangerous yeah. for for believers. So we talk about the the attacks of the enemy within the context of not only our human weakness, but God's sovereign power. Mm -hmm. So you know, He tempts us. Um, afflicts, the said. devil afflicts us, mm -hmm. as he did in the case of Job, and then in some cases, you know, there's, you know, the, the devil can possess people. Mm -hmm. You know, you can have bondages and, and strongholds, and we even see in, in the New Testament scriptures right. there were demonic possession. Often, Often yeah. you see, yeah. and, uh, and 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 Jesus regularly encountered, you know, people who were possessed of the devil. Right. Well, I think it's so important we're having this conversation because I think it's one that if we're not careful, we'll shy away from. People will mm -hmm. and think, oh, I don't really I don't understand all of that, so I'm not going to dive into it. Mm -hmm. But the Gospels, and even Paul, has a lot to say mm -hmm. about this world that's unseen. Mm -hmm. And if we are unaware, then we're so susceptible. Right. You know, we're just an open target yeah. for the enemy to tempt, mm -hmm. to try to come against an afflict, mm -hmm. or to... If it's an unbeliever possessed or influence, right? You know, there there are times where Christians can even be influenced. I'm not talking about demon possession, mm -hmm. but influenced because of things that we open up our mind, right. or our heart to, mm -hmm. our family to, and it's like, hey, we got to make sure that we're putting up a guard, right. that we have a wall mm -hmm. around our life, mm -hmm. like they would in ancient times, put these massive walls around these cities. Right. Why? Because they didn't want the enemy invading, mm -hmm. and so it's the same realization that there is one who has come to steal, kill, and destroy, That's that right. he wants to annihilate. And I think one of the ways he does that so deceptively is he's always trying to separate us from God. Mm. He's trying to get us and our identity off and who we are in Christ mm -hmm. and also with each other. Mm -hmm. And I think that's even maybe one of the main tactics. He wants to create division in families. Mm -hmm. He wants to create division in churches. Right. And he wants to separate because there's power in unity. Mm -hmm. And so it's just always a tactic of his. And I just appreciate this conversation to say, hey, this is a reality. Mm -hmm. This is who he is. Right. He is definitely underneath the authority of God. That's important. He is not... He is not God. Right. He was created. Right. He has limited power, mm -hmm. though he is powerful, so there needs to be an awareness of his power, mm -hmm. but it's all subject to the authority and the power mm -hmm. of the one who has always existed. Mm -hmm. You who? framed it so well. Yeah, that, that's, And I, like you said, I, I think it's a danger when, as believers, we're in a battle and we don't realize it. Right. You know, so even the church was birthed within the context of struggle. In Matthew 16, 18, Jesus said upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not will not prevail against it. So, you know, if if we're a part of the family of God, we're going to be moving in a direction that is the exact opposite of the spirit of this world. Right. And so part of the battle that we experience, whether it's daily or in a season of just intense struggle, it's confirmation that we are walking with the Lord. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's almost expect resistance. Yeah, you, you have to. Yeah. I have, opposition almost validates your destiny. That's good. And, and so 
um, I, I think that this conversation is so it's practical and it's appropriate for the believer because we are in the world, but we're not of the world. Right. We come up against uh, you know forces all the time, whether it's through media, entertainment, social media. I mean, you look at the world that our kids are growing up in these days, mm -hmm. and as as parents and pastors and leaders, if if we're not equipping our kids to fight the good fight of faith, right? Then there can be that those those footholds that become strongholds and, and people that have walked through traumatic experiences, the devil will leverage that against them and keep them in yeah. a in a um, in a posture of defeat, right? You know, and so I think that I love this. I think yeah. this is super helpful, man. Paul framed it well: be strong in the Lord, not in our own strength, mm -hmm. but in the power of His might. And then he talks about some some weapons and some armor that's available to us, and and it's important. Those things are available to us, but God won't put on that armor for that's us. That's good. That's good. You know, and so this is where the equipping comes in. Of, okay, well. How do we fight? How do we move right. forward in the face of adversity? Well, in light of what you just said, let, let's transition. Because he, he goes on and he talks about these different pieces of armor. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I've read, and I know you studied as well, that most likely he was in prison. He was in prison, and he's mm -hmm. looking at uh, a, a Roman guard. And mm -hmm. he's looking at the exterior armor, mm -hmm. but he's always thinking in the spirit. Right. And Paul's saying, hey, just as this guard or this person for war has to be dressed and ready for battle, mm -hmm. we have to have some spiritual weapons ready. Mm -hmm. And I, I particularly like how you talk through, the the, the way you talk through in, in order um, what to put on each day. I think it's an easy way to remember it, is you do it from head to toe. Head to toe. And I know Paul writes it, and we're not trying to change Paul. Not changing scripture. Paul, you did write. I'm rearranging some of the order. <laughs> yeah. But to remember it, yeah. why don't you talk to us through how you pray that or how you operate in that daily, starting with the helmet of salvation and, and working all the way through. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, and this was kind of birthed in, you know, we would take our kids to school in the morning. You know, ba Baton Rouge traffic can be a battle in and of itself. I might be a devil right there. <laughs> oh, Lord. Um, <laughs> a legion. <laughs> that's it. Man, we're fighting a lot of devils out on them streets. Um, but, uh, but so having the kids in the car with me, of course, this is when they were young, um, man, you're, you've got a captive audience, you know, so you're taking them to school and I'm thinking, okay, I want to, I want to maximize this drive to school and prepare my kids just as they got dressed before they left the house. I want to dress them in the armor of God. So when they get to their campus, right. they're ready. And so right. I, th I thought of it from head to toe. And, you know, there, there are six pieces that the apostle Paul talks about. And the first he said, well, he, I don't know if he says it first, but this is the first that I pray. Yeah. The, the helmet of salvation. That's first. Yeah. You got, got to put on that helmet of salvation. The helmet protects the head. And, and I know this, that 90% of the battles we fight are That's right, right here. You know, the, the, the battlefield right. of the mind. And so yeah. the helmet protects what's happening in here. And, you know, there, there are thoughts, there are images, there are influences, there are pressures, there are all these things that come against our children, come against us. But when we start our day, I, I, I visually just imagine putting on a helmet of salvation. Now, it's interesting mm -hmm. that he calls it the helmet salvation, of salvation, right? you know, which is the, the you know, justification, sanctification, glorification. There are three different mm -hmm. elements of that that I won't really unpack, but, you know, to, to know who you are that's and right. to know whose you that's, are. That's so important. When you're saved, man, right. you are in Christ. Speaking of the tactics of the enemy, the first temptation, you know, that, that the devil gave to Jesus, he said, if you really are the Son of God... Mm -hmm turn these stones to bread. Yeah. And this was on the heels of God making an announcement to the world, hey, this is my son, the one that I love, and him I'm well pleased. And so the devil will cause you to question everything that God has said. Well, if you really are, right. then do this. And Jesus knew he didn't have to prove himself. And so, you know, I want my kids, I want myself, I know who I am in Christ. And, and so the, the helmet of salvation, man, we protect our mind, mm -hmm. you know, man, that we don't just let any stray thought come in and out of our head. We don't let them build, don't let a bird build a nest, right. you know, that will cause you to move. Because where the mind goes, the man follows. That's right. The mind is the steering wheel of the life. You know, and I, I find sometimes in my own life, I have thoughts that really distract me. Mm. And sometimes I think, okay, am I just being distracted? Is this just a natural thing? 
or is this a spiritual attack? Mm. You know, and to understand where it's coming from in order to fight what it is that's coming mm-hmm. against you. Mm-hmm. And I do, like you said, love that he talks about salvation first, because if you don't have that foundation, <laughs> that's right. And the rest, the rest is useless. You're because, fighting in your own strength. Yeah. And I love that you said too about your identity, you know, of understanding who you are in Christ. Mm-hmm. And Jesus even says, I have all authority and I give authority to you. Mm-hmm. So if you know in your mind through salvation, justification, sanctification, and one day glorification that I am Jesus's, I'm a son of the Father, mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, mm-hmm. and then that changes the way you think. Mm-hmm. Because now you have authority that's beyond yourself, mm-hmm. but it's authority from heaven. Mm-hmm. So when you're fighting against spiritual forces of darkness, mm-hmm. like you started out with, I'm not fighting in my own strength, my own resilience, my own, right. oh, I'm just going to press through myself. No, I'm fighting from the mindset that God is with me mm. and for me. So, mm. so awesome. Game changer. Game changer. Mm-hmm. Makes all the difference in the world. And, you know, when we fight, it's not, it's not us fighting for victory, but from a place mm-hmm. of victory. I you love know, what the, you said. That's good. Well, I, I mean, Say it again. The Pastor power Mike. of the cross, you know. <laughs> I mean, it, Jesus defeated the enemy at Calvary, yeah. and we have to go back. We have to draw back on that experience of what God did for me. Is, is greater than what anybody else is trying to do to me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you, you read verse 12 in there that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Mm-hmm. You know, the, 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 the enemy is not people, but the enemy will use people. Oh, they use them. Yeah. And so we're not fighting the person at work. We're not right. fighting, you know, our classmate, not fighting the... Ne- it, it may be manifest in a, mm-hmm. in a physical sense, but no, there's a spirit behind right. that. And so Paul's talking about spiritual warfare, you mm-hmm. know. So the helmet of salvation keeps us in the spirit. We know who we are. We know whose we are. Yeah. And so I go helmet of salvation, and then I'll go the, the body armor, the, the breastplate of righteousness, mm-hmm. you know. And the purpose of that body armor, again, as you talked about the Apostle Paul looking at a Roman soldier and just picking out the pieces and in the natural pointing to the spiritual, the purpose of body armor is to protect the heart. And, you know, in Proverbs 4.23, above all things, That's good. guard your heart, for out of it flows the issues of life. And, you know, th- there'll be something that you'll fight in your head, but don't let it drop to your heart. Mm-hmm. You know, helmet of salvation, protecting our thoughts, but then man, the, the breastplate of righteousness is guarding our heart. Man, if you have a heart wound, you know, it could be fatal. Right. Heart attacks can be Fatal. Mm-hmm. I, I can lose a finger and still survive. Mm-hmm. You know, in fact, I had gotten a car wreck, had my nose ripped off my face. But guess what? I'm still here. That's right. Something that happens in my heart could could be fatal. And so the body armor is to protect the most valuable piece, and that's our heart. Yeah. That's our soul. That's good. I, I love that. And then and next, he talks about you go to the belt. Of I, go truth shield. Or, I go shield. Okay. Yeah, I go shield of faith. So helmet, so, helmet of salvation, breastplate, breastplate of righteousness, righteousness, and we go in shield. Shield, baby, <laughs> the shield. And this is to to block every fiery dart of the enemy. Yeah. Because the enemy's, you know, trying to, you know, um, pick us apart. And 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 know this that the attacks of the enemy, temptation is. Because the devil never attacks strength, he always attacks weakness. Mm-hmm. And so it's customized for our weaknesses. And he'll try to, you know, shoot fiery darts if he knows that we're insecure, if we battle insecurity. He's going to set up things right. to really accentuate. He'll fire a dart, you know, of, of, of jealousy or fear because he knows that insecurity is a weakness. you got to take that shield of faith. That's right. And, and block those fiery darts. In fact, you know, in, in ancient, uh, in biblical times, that shield of faith was about, you know, three feet tall, three feet wide. And, you know, a soldier could could get behind that to deflect what was coming against him. It was a... a the, you would need a bigger shield. I would need a bigger shield. <laughs> Three feet <laughs> well, tall and wide. That, that's not covering the bishop. Well, I'd have to maneuver. Yeah, gotta, you'd have to be like from Spider-Man, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the shield was thick, okay, yeah. and it was wooden, and it, on the face of it was was metal, or it was it was uh, treated leather. And so the metal could either block it, hmm. or the treated leather le- leather would quench the fiery oh, darts. Okay, yeah. So uh, you quenching good. those darts. So it's very specific. You know, right. the, each piece of this armor has a purpose, yeah. you know, and so you know, sometimes the enemy fires things at us and we don't, I mean, we weren't expecting that, but a shield of faith, because we believe. This yes. is not just a shield, but it's a shield of faith, yes. you know, and sometimes you have to live not by what you see, <laughs> yeah. 
but what God has yeah. said. You know, you, you're talking about the shield of faith. It's not called the shield of feelings. Come on. <laughs> you know, because that that's shield, not going to protect that you shield, from anything, man, you, is it? You're done. You're done. Because, <laughs> uh, man, I have a lot of feelings run through oh, my mind. Man. It gets in my heart that I'm not blocking. But faith blocks that, mm, you know, because so that faith is what God has to say. Mm-hmm. It's what is true in his kingdom and mm-hmm. not just what I see with my eyes that's dictating mm-hmm. my feelings and mm-hmm. my mind. But it's saying, hey, you know what? I, I need to pump the brakes and say, hey, w- w- what, what's going on in the spirit? Mm-hmm. You know, and that, that's, that's good. That's good right there. That'll preach. Come on. Man. Not, not shield of feelings. <laughs> it just shield. came to me. That was holy ghost. Right. Man. Write that down, man. <laughs> Write it down. We have it recorded. <laughs> <laughs> so then I go from shield of faith, then I go sword of the spirit. Okay. Because I'm thinking in, in one arm, but, but, I've got the shield. Yeah. And the next, I'm carrying the sword. Okay. And the sword of helmet, spi- helmet of salvation, breastplate, breastplate sword, of righteousness, shield sword. of faith, okay. sword of the spirit. Like We're it. working our I way like down it. now. I like it. And that's the only offensive weapon. Everything else is defense, mm-hmm. but this is offense. And the sword of the spirit is the word Come on. of God. That's why we got to know the word. Learn your Bible, baby. Got to. Got to be in it. Got to equip ourselves with it daily. Matthew 22, 29, Jesus said, this is your problem. You don't know the scriptures, and so mm-hmm. you don't know the power of God. That's good. And so when you don't know the word of God, you can't experience the power of God. That's right. But when you know the word, man, You're now ready. it's like, okay, I'm going to slice and dice the devil. I'm yes. going to chop him down to size. Yes. And so even Jesus used the word right. against Satan in the wilderness when he was being tempted. So he, And he did, but Adam didn't. You know, and That's the th- same thing was questioned. Did God really Did say? God say? And Adam and Eve, they just, they, what? Mm. But they didn't use the word. Mm-hmm. And that, that weapon makes all the difference. It's kind of like an athlete that trains and they're prepared. Mm-hmm. You know, in the same way, we've got to be diligent. Yes. Like this is not optional. <laughs> right. It's not required for salvation that you read the Bible every day. I'm not saying that. We're not working for, for salvation, work from salvation. But at the same time, man, if we're going to have an offensive weapon, we better know the playbook. Mm. We, we better know, hey, this is what God's word says. If this is truth. This is not. I know you're going to get to the belt in a second, but man, that that's so important. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate that about you. I know you don't brag on yourself, but I appreciate that about you. The word just flows through you, man. Mm. I know you're loving this right now that I'm <laughs> I'm talking about how good you are at this, but it just flows through. You. And, but that that challenges me. Yeah. So I'm like, man, how many songs do I know? I mean, I can sing some country songs. <laughs> <laughs> don't get me started. Hey, <laughs> Billy Ray. <laughs> But how, sing us a little country song right now, on, all day. Man, I, I, I need to write a song no. called "All Day," man. <laughs> <laughs> but how important it is to know the word uh, yes. and, and be ready. Yeah. You're gonna be ready, and people think, "Well, I'm not a preacher. I don't need to know the word. I'm not preaching." Man, you fighting? That's right. You you fighting? That's right. And you need to know what you're hanging on to. Mm-hmm. And if you're not hanging on the right sword, mm. you, you holding things of this world. Man, what's in your hand? That's right. You know, and I, I want to be the type of person, not just because of what I do occupationally right. and what I do as far as a calling, but I want to be a follower who has the word in me. Mm-hmm. No, that's good. Slicing and dicing. Slicing and dicing and chopping him down to size. No. That old big bad old devil, man. <laughs> you get the word out, you start wielding that sword that's of the right. spirit. Man, it, it, the, the devil has no... I mean, it, it, again, we talked about Jesus encountering demon-possessed people. Man, they begged for his mercy. Yeah. You know, they, and Jesus had the, uh, the, the power. The, he was the word that became flesh, mm-hmm. you know. And so, you know, the, the gathering demoniac. They're right. like, oh, don't send us into the abyss, man. Send us yeah. over to the, the, the pigs. pigs, you know. <laughs> and so, um, but man, you have the authority. That's Listen, there, there's, there's something about the, the power of the name of Jesus and the authority of his word. Mm-hmm. Luke 10, 19, I think the Amplified Bible says this. Jesus is sending out his disciples in Luke 10, and he says, Behold, I give unto you power and authority yes. to tread on serpents and scorpions and, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will in any way harm you. So they had power and they had authority. Here's what I thought the other day. In Acts 19, you read about the seven sons of Sceva. Yeah. And Sceva was a leading priest, you know, in, in that day, and so he had seven sons, and so they tried to cast out a devil, and they said, in the name of Jesus, the, this Jesus of whom Paul, Paul preaches, preaches, and the demons said, well, we know who Jesus is. <laughs> we know Paul. We know Paul, but who, who are, are you? you? And th- this man, through the power of those demon forces, attacked the seven sons of Sceva. Ran out naked. See, look, they were trying to use the power of of the name of Jesus, but they didn't have the authority mm-hmm. of God's word. Yeah. They didn't. 
And so Jesus— They wanted, they wanted the power without the presence. That, come on. You know? And you can't have the presence without mm-hmm. being present with him mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. really just soaking that in. I was just thinking, as you're talking, that just recently, I, I felt like some things were happening. It wasn't temptation, but things were happening that I was just getting down. Mm-hmm. And I, I found myself, and I don't get it right all the time, but this day I started just calling out and just mm-hmm. saying, thank you, God, and quote, quoting Scripture, and I felt just this spiritual breakthrough. Mm-hmm. And I got, I, I know it's hard to believe. I got a little loud. I know it's hard to believe. <laughs> but I was getting loud. I was by myself, so I could be as loud as hey, I want to. turn up the volume. Yeah, turn it up. <laughs> Heaven definitely heard me. But I, I just started <laughs> quoting scriptures and saying Amen. who God is and what he is in my life and what he can do. And I'm Amen. telling you, Pastor Mike, I felt it was a spiritual attack. I mean, there was natural things happening. Right. I felt a breakthrough mm. in my mind and my spirit, and it mm-hmm. was through the word. Amen. Well, and, and for parents who are watching, grandparents who are raising, you know, grandkids, you know, we we fight battles for our children and our grandkids. We know what their struggles are. And I've I know we've done this in our family sometimes, and I've heard of stories where, you know, parents go into the bedroom of that child and man, just anointing things with oil. Oh, Sheila. Man, putting scriptures under oh, pillows, yeah. man. Yeah. I mean, putting scriptures inside of their shoes. So when they <laughs> stand on the word of God, That's you know, it. I mean, you, again, we, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but mm. man, the enemy comes out after the things and the people that we love. And so this is how we fight. That's right. You know, and so helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, shield of faith, sword of the spirit. And then I get to the belt of truth, you know, and that belt, the belt holds up your dignity, your honesty, Mm -hmm. your integrity, and it's truth. You know, we talked about the truth of God's word. It's truth that sets people free. Mm-hmm. And when a when a warrior would go into battle, sometimes they would have like loose clothing. They would have to fold that up and tuck that in and cinch it with their belt, so mm. it made them more agile okay. in the fight. Yeah. And so the, the belt was extremely important. And um, you know, I, I think for us, you know, we've got to tighten our belt. That's good. In some areas, you know, and. Um, uh, you know, I want to walk with in holiness and purity and integrity. Uh, I, I think about that not just as a husband and as a father, but also as a pastor, you know, and, and the responsibility that God's given us as pastors mm-hmm. when it comes to the church and the people that we lead. You know, I, I've got to have the belt of truth on. That's good. You know, I, I don't want to say one thing and then do another. Yeah. Preach it in the pulpit, but, man, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm losing where it matters most, mm-hmm. and that's in my home. I, I want to be able to to have integrity in how I lead, and and the belt of truth helps us to maintain our integrity. Love it, love it. And the final piece, the feet, the shoes, shoes, shoes of feet, the gospel shoes. of peace. Yes, and shoes represent direction. Yeah, you know, shoes speak of a journey. You know, you dress for where you're going, not for where you've been. Yeah. When I put my shoes on, it's speaking of where I'm headed. Yep. You know, and so, you know, I, I want, to, I got to walk this thing out, you mm-hmm. know, and we can only do it one step at a time. Yep. It's how we gain ground, you know, put, putting on the, the shoes of the gospel of peace. And Paul wrote in another passage, I think it's Romans 10, uh, 14, 15, how beautiful are the feet yep. of those who bring good news. Yeah. And now we are ambassadors. And and I think, you know, the battles that we fight and we see through the help of the Holy Spirit and, you know, the, the putting on of the armor of God, having done all to stand, stand firm. Paul says, just keep standing. Yes. And so I think there's a, a word of encouragement to give some people today who are under just fierce attack. Mm-hmm. And maybe they don't see, you know, the, the pendulum of victory beginning to swing. Stand That's good. firm. I love it. Man, stand strong. Persevere. Mm-hmm. May, maybe your, your kids are in a dark place and you haven't seen any progress. Keep standing. Yeah. You know, may, sickness in your body and you're trusting God for healing. Don't give up. That's good. Keep standing. That's good. You know, feet being prepared with the shoes of the gospel of peace, that'll help you stand because you're, right. you're anchored. It's yeah. almost like, hey, he goes through this list. Mm-hmm. It says, because of these things, you don't have the shoes of panic. Mm. Yeah, the shoes of peace. Come on. And you can stand in peace because you're saved. 
Yeah. Because you're declared righteous. Yes. Because you got the faith of the Lord. You got the sword of the Spirit, the belt of truth. And because of all those things, you are grounded in Mm -hmm. peace. That's Mm -hmm. what people want. Mm -hmm. And people Mm -hmm. want peace, but you have to have peace. In order to have it, you have to have those pieces Mm -hmm. on. That's right. (laughs) Oh, hey, hey. Hey. It's just rolling. Man, you are It's because I'm in your presence. No, sir. (laughs) No, sir. You've got that already. But but isn't that good, though? Yeah, that's great. So many people, and even Christians, we operate and we're walking in panic. We're walking in chaos. Mm -hmm. And God's like, man, I want you to, I want your feet to be not just peace for your own life, but peace for people around no, you. That's good. You walk into that's a room, good. you ever been around somebody that's just, they just, hey, you just got the spirit of peace on them. Mm. You get around them, you're like, ooh, yes. I like that. Or go in somebody's home and you can just feel the peace of God. I feel like mm. when people pull on property here, yes. that's one thing we hear over and over again. It's Amen. just, Filled with peace. Amen. It's filled with life. Yes. And sometimes the language is funny because it's not super spiritual. It's like, I don't know, it just felt good. You know, good energy. Yeah, good energy. They got a great vibe in this place. Yeah, good vibes. But we know that's the presence of God. That's the presence of His Spirit. I just love that. That's so good, Pastor Mike, looking through that. So I know we talked about the the tactics of the enemy, Mm -hmm. talked about the pieces of armor that we Mm -hmm. wear. Mm -hmm. This final thing, just quickly, is what do you do daily? Like, what does it look like as you feel attacked? You feel like, man, the enemy's coming against me. Mm-hmm. Um, and what do you practice? What do you do? I know you go over the, the full armor, but mm-hmm. what are some practical mm-hmm. things that can, can help those mm-hmm. who are listening Well, w- one thing, too, is uh, I think we, obviously, God is the source of our strength, and we all have the responsibility to equip ourselves with this armor. But if you noticed in the, the arsenal that we've been given from head to toe, there, there's no armor for the back. Mm. And, and I think there's probably a, a reason for that. Is because we got to have each other's back. That's right. You know, I got your back, Community. you got mine. Community Everything. is huge. Huge. And, and being able to call on close friends, that's why small groups are important. Being in a small group, yep. walking with people. I've drawn a lot of strength from, I, I, I think about the battles that I have fought personally and in my family without that network of, of friends mm-hmm. in my life. Yep. And part of me drawing strength is hearing their battles and seeing God's faithfulness in their so life. True. And it's like, yeah. okay, well, I'm not alone, because I yeah. think the part of the tactics of the enemy is when you're fighting a battle is for you to feel isolated. Yeah, just me. Like nobody else has ever gone through this. And, man, we walked through some hard things with our kids one time, and I, I was in my small group, and I began to share. And it's just like, dude, th- th- uh, this guy opened up, and this guy started talking about what God did in his family, what God did with his kids, with his grandkids. Yes. And I'm like, I felt hope coming yeah. to me. You know, and I yeah. had I had the weapons, I had the armor, I had the scriptures, I was doing my daily disciplines, but it, reaching out in in community, That's so good. I think it was it helped to renew the warrior inside yeah. of me. Because what good is all the armor of God without the warrior on the inside, inside. man? Yes. I, I can fight at a new level of faith because yes. I got my brothers that I've locked arms with. I'm, I'm so glad you mentioned that because so many people, when they feel under attack, the easiest thing sometimes, even though it's not the right thing is I'm going to isolate. Mm-hmm. And the enemy just loves it mm-hmm. because there is there is a lack of wisdom when we don't have other people around us. Mm-hmm. There's a lack of clarity. Mm-hmm. As men, our minds can play tricks on us. Our feelings can play tricks on us. And mm-hmm. just having people in your corner, mm-hmm. in your circle, mm-hmm. that you're doing life with. And that's what I love so much about our church. Yes. We, ha- we have a church that people love each other. They do. And they care about each other. Mm-hmm. And we're not walking around with airs and, hey, look at me, but it's, hey, how can I help your life and how can you help mine? Amen. It's a spirit of humility. Yep. And I think that's one thing that makes makes HBC so attractive yes. is just, hey, we're here to serve. Right. We're here to love people. Mm-hmm. Even if your life's a little different, man, we, we want you to experience everything God has for mm-hmm. you, and I need you in my life. Amen. And I, I'm thankful for you in my life. Amen. Well, you know, you've been a, a, an instrument from the Lord to strengthen me. So mm-hmm. I know you said community. Uh, what, what about some other? Well, let me say this too. Okay. So, so speaking of community and and the power of friendship, because I remember I had a dream about <laughs> you one time. I told oh, this yeah. to you. You oh, know yeah. what I'm here oh, yeah. to share. I love this dream. Yeah, it's awesome, man. And I, it was maybe one this, day it'll happen. Man, I, I, dude, you were like a <laughs> missile, bro. I mean, that that's pretty much me. Yeah, you yeah. you are just this human cannonball. I, it was in this open field. It mm. kind of looked like uh, remember the gladiator, gladiator. scene yeah, where yeah, it kind of yeah, yeah. you know got the wheat growing and the yeah. It was this open field. And there was something coming against me. I couldn't see. In my dream, I couldn't see if it was a person or just some dark force. But I saw David Ray all day. Oh. Bro, you like a speeding bullet That's came. Yeah. And out of nowhere. Boom. And just, boom. 
I mean, yep. linebacker, this, whatever it was, open field tackle. I don't know if you know this, but in eighth grade, outside linebacker. <laughs> For real? Hey, captain of the football team in eighth grade. That's kind of my height of athleticism. Wow. But nevertheless, yeah. See, so this who, is definitely who, from the Lord. Who knew? Yeah, number who, five. Wow. That's impressive. The things you find out on a podcast. Come on, man. Bro. I'm sure everybody's interested in knowing that. Well, so I woke up from that dream, and I felt like it was spiritual. Yeah. And I felt like the Lord, and I shared that with you, and I know you got my back, and yeah. I know you fight for me. And I just think about the people who are fighting battles, and they feel like they got nobody mm. running through a field yes. to fight for them, you know? And so, you know, community is huge. Yeah. If, I, I, if you're in isolation, I encourage you, step out of that, man. And be vulnerable. Share life with somebody. You know, confide in somebody and ask for help. And, and, and pray with them. Yeah. You know, the community prayer. And I, it's interesting you mentioned dreams. I believe I really believe God speaks to His people. He speaks yeah. to us through His Word. The Bible yeah. talks about in the latter times, the last days, I'll pour out my spirit in all flesh. You'll have dreams and Indeed. visions. Right. And so, and you'll prophesy. Mm -hmm. So God will give us words. And a lot of times, dreams that I have, spiritual dreams, are warnings. Yep. And I, when I get them. Mm. I, I I tell people that I know, like you and others. I call my mama. <laughs> I mean, I'm calling I'm calling all the prayer warriors. Amen. And I said, hey, I, I want you to stand with me. I want you to pray. Yes. And there's so much power of, of just praying together mm -hmm. and and standing in agreement together. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think it just it messes with the enemy because again, mm -hmm. he's trying to divide us. Mm -hmm. But everything God does is addition and multiplication. That's it. So when attacks come, I'm gonna be ready. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have the word. I'm gonna have my full armor. I'm gonna know his tactics, but at the same time, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna be standing with other people. That's right. I just love it. That's I right. know. I know. In two weeks, Pastor Mike, um, we're gonna be talking about. You're gonna be talking about uh, speaking in tongues, baptism in the Holy Spirit. So I, and that's gonna be awesome. Yes. I know that's probably one thing that you practice. Mm -hmm. I know you mentioned also worship, the importance mm -hmm. of worship, mm -hmm. and just worshiping God. Anything you want to comment on that? Yeah. No, I think the practice of of, of daily, you know, worship. We talked about the one year Bible, but then spending time in worship, man, it's renewing your mm -hmm. spirit. You know, it's redirecting your focus, and then you know, praying in the Holy Spirit. There's, there's a. Uh, it'll be fun there. to unpack that. So I don't want us to uh, yeah, uh, we, unpack we, that right we'll now. Save that one for the next time. In two weeks. Two weeks. Man, it's going to be it's gonna be amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, today's been so great. We just want to thank you guys so much for joining us. Hey, if you've enjoyed this, give us a thumbs up. Share it with somebody. Let's get the word out. People need the word of God. We love you guys. So thankful for you. Keep being a healing place for a hurting world.